everybody. My name is Dina Stetson, and I'm the VP of Membership Marketing and Communication at Temple Beth Am. This year, we are introducing our new clergy, Rob Blumberg and Cantor Wolf. Um, today's program will be centered around these two great clergy people. And uh, Rob Blumberg just started with us in July and is in the last year of his education at, at Hebrew College to be ordained as a rabbi next year. Cantor Wolf has been with TBA for the last couple of years as a cantoral intern and just recently graduated from Hebrew College as a cantor. So welcome both of you. We decided that one of the best ways to, for the public to get to know our new clergy team was to have a televised sit-down interview with them. So here we go. So we're going to start with some rapid-fire questions. Shabbat dinner guest, dead or alive, who would be your choice? Oh, my goodness. Wow, that's wonderful. I would love to have Abraham Joshua Heschel, uh, a prominent rabbi, um, around the time of the, the civil rights movement, um, he marched with Martin Luther King Jr. He had some really, really beautiful ideas, both about Shabbat and about the future of Judaism, about prophecy, about where we find God in our lives. And I would love to have him sit down at my table, speak with him, enjoy some, some food and some good wine, um, and do a little bit of singing. All right. A lot or Masada? Masada for me. What a majestic place. Being in, in the desert um, in Israel and looking out and thinking about the history, just an incredible, incredible place. Funny moment on the Bima. Funny moment on the Bima. Wonderful. What a great question. You know, somebody told me once that I should really change out my water bottle on the Bima. And I thought that was pretty funny. I had a, a bright orange water bottle at the time. And, and I thought, are people really looking at the rabbi's water bottle? So now I have a, a pretty plain and boring one so that I don't call too much attention to it. <laughs> All right, great. Favorite Judaica in your home? Oh, wonderful question. We have some really special Shabbat candles uh, from when my wife and I were living in Israel. Both her parents bought her a uh, Shabbat candle set, made a ceramic set, and uh, my parents bought me sort of a travel set of metal candlesticks. Um, and so we, we try to light those every Shabbat together, and we think of our families as we do that. Excellent. A book that changed your, changed your life, not one of the five obvious ones. A book that changed my life and, and really set me on the path to the rabbinate is a book called Sacred Fragments by Neil, Rabbi Neil Gilman. Um, he just passed away a couple of years ago. And um, in it, he gives a lot of different ideas about what Judaism can mean in each of our lives, what God can mean in each of our lives, what revelation can be for us. And it opened my mind to lots of different ways of thinking about how we navigate the world, how we navigate our Judaism. All right. Red Sox or Yankees? Oh, I'm just not a baseball guy. I'm now you got to pick. All right. Well, Red Sox, Red Sox. All right. I'll, good. I good anger, answer. I think I'll anger less people if I pick the Red Sox, right? <laughs> Summer or winter? Winter, actually. I, I really crave it in the summer. I love the beginning of the heat of the summer, but it gets to be too much. Yeah, especially now. All right, you're off the hook. Cantor, ready? Let's do it. <laughs> right. Favorite Jewish holiday to explain to a non-Jew? I'm going to say Shabbat. Shabbat, Shabbat is, should, be a part of, <clears throat> should be a part of everyone's life. Um, it's just a good personal practice to take a Shabbat. And it's also like it's also part and parcel of Christianity and Judaism. Um, Shabbat. Jerusalem or Tel Aviv? Well, I lived in Tel Aviv for two years, so it's very close to my heart. And I spent a month this summer in Jerusalem, so it's also close to my heart. Got to pick. <laughs> I'm going to say Tel Aviv. Um, I know it so well, and it's just so vibrant, and it's so much fun. 
And it's, it's also so Jewish, despite the fact yeah. that it's not Jerusalem. It's still so Jewish. Excellent. All right. Song you always sang the wrong words to, either cantoral or pop. Song I always sang the wrong words to. Well, okay. okay. The, the, yeah. truth is, the truth is that I am like a melody person, not a word person. So okay. I have a hard time remembering words. Bob Dylan songs. I, I love yeah. Bob Dylan. I know all of his songs, but I never get the words right. And there are yeah. tough words. Yeah, cool, cool. Um, favorite Jewish food you look forward to all year? Gefilte fish. Really? <laughs> I know, it's an unpopular answer. I, I just love it. It's salty and full of protein. I, I just love gefilte fish. I actually eat it year round. Instrument you wish you could play? Uh, well, I'll answer that question with, um, I play, I play the piano and the guitar and the drums and the clarinet and I sing okay. and I play the bass. The thing I don't play that I would like, but play, you wish to play. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I love to, I love to be a competent wow. cellist. I love the cello. The cello to me sounds like, uh, like a, a like a male voice. So mm -hmm. to me, I feel this connection to the cello. Hmm. Cool. All right. Patriots versus Giants. I'm from DC. So <laughs> I. Okay. Versus Giants. Patriots. Yeah. I am a baseball guy and not a football guy. Ah, okay. Switch the, the questions. Patriots. All right. Cats or dogs? I love them both, but dogs. Yeah. Cool. Well, that was a really good get to know you kind of couple of minutes. So it was great. Um, so, um, Rob Blumberg, uh, you're from Southern California, right? And your wife is from Worcester. How did you meet? We met doing a junior uh, semester abroad at Hebrew University in Jerusalem, Israel. So if I had gotten that question, uh, certainly would have been Jerusalem. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we met there. We were actually neighbors on the same floor. And um, my wife is a classical flutist by training. And I heard this beautiful flute music and I was introduced to her by a very close mutual friend. Uh, and I said, wow, your, your playing is so beautiful. And, uh, and we went from there and we've been together uh, ever since. <laughs> oh, that's really nice. How long have you been married? We just celebrated seven years of marriage um, about two weeks ago. And, Congratulations. Uh, thank you. And it's, and it's been really wonderful. We actually, for our anniversary, we took our two kids. We have a, a four-year-old and a two-and-a-half-year-old. And, a -year -old, and mm -hmm. we took our kids to Tower Hill Botanic Garden close by, where we actually got married seven years ago. And to, to go back there on our anniversary uh, and to be able to bring our kids to right at the place where the chuppah, the wedding canopy stood, was, was just so beautiful. That's so nice. Great. And um, you've moved now to this uh, Northeast. You're dealing with all the heat and humidity. Um, how are you finding the weather? And is it, you know, are you, are you adapting? It certainly takes some time to adapt. I, I think, you know, I think that I can adapt to the winter much better than the summer. Yeah. The humidity, I always do the, the elbow stickiness test. That's how you can tell how humid it is when you're wearing a short sleeve shirt and however, you know, how long it takes for your arm to unstick. That's yes. how, you know how humid it is. Yes. I usually tell by the hair thing. <laughs> um, awesome. Um, so Cantor, um, you had talked about some IDF training in Israel. Oh, yeah. Um, good. Yeah. Memory. Tell oh. us about that. So after college, uh, kind of on a lark, I moved to Israel. And the first thing I did um, was this, this program um, for uh, you know, diaspora Jews, Jews from all over the world, to come to Israel and to go through basic training, just like they were in the army, um, mm -hmm. to, to experience what it's like to be in, Israeli, in the Israeli army. Uh, so for three months, I lived on an army base. Um, mm -hmm. I, I wore a uniform. I, you know, um, went on these, like, uh, they were called a Masa, and we would basically spend all day walking through the desert carrying sandbags. Um, it's, a re it's a real thing. And it was, um, you know, kind of a test of your, your metal 
Um, mm -hmm. For me, I learned Hebrew and I got to know the country. I got to know what it's like to, to be in the Israeli army. And um, because of course, all Israelis have to serve in the army. Mm. And it was an amazing experience. I, I made uh, friends, Jewish friends from Mexico, from Australia, from Brazil. And these are friends I still have. Um, so, and after the three months, I decided that, that that was enough. I did not want to, <laughs> um, yes. but it was, it was an amazing experience. Right. Right. Definitely test your metal. What was the hardest thing you had to do? I had to shave my head. <laughs> that I had long hair at that time and they forced me as per army rules. You had to have a regulation haircut. I just, just like, right. you know, and no facial hair. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so I had long hair and I was like, I don't want to shave my head. And they said, you have to shave your head. Um, so I did. Um, wow. But it was hard. I'll look for pictures about that. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right. So let's start talking about the temple. Um, both of you are going to be uh, co-directors of education at the temple. Rob, you're going to be responsible for the higher grades, and Cantor, you're going to be responsible for the lower grades, as I understand. We haven't started yet. Uh, we are still taking applications and registration forms for schools, so if you're interested, please contact the Temple office. Um, so why don't we talk about um, some goals of the, the both higher and lower education. You can bounce off each other uh, during this part. Rob, why don't you start? Something that I'm thinking about a lot um, and is always in the back of my head, especially when thinking about children and um, Jewish education is positive Jewish engagement. And it's something that I talk about a lot and is so important to me. Um, I have a background in Jewish education. I taught uh, in, a, in a Jewish day school, middle school setting for five years before rabbinical school. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's all about making sure that our children and our teens are engaged in, in Judaism, in Jewish learning, in Jewish life, that they're making sure that the way that they're understanding Judaism is that it is their own. And every single person has their own way that they identify with Judaism, that they connect, things that they do and don't believe in, and I see our job as, as facilitating that experience for, for our children and for our teens um, and making them feel like it's really theirs to own. It really is their um, inheritance, their birthright, um, and for Jews by choice, you know, for, that it's a part of their lives as well, just to choose um, what it is that we believe in, what we take, what we take with us forward, um, and that that's not always easy. We're, we're called Yisrael. Um, mm -hmm. Yisra means struggling with God. And so that's, that's a lifelong experience. But I want us all to be um, engaged in that and to be having positive Jewish experiences. And by the way, to be enjoying ourselves and being uh, with other Jewish kids and teens and families um, and, and singing and enjoying the fullness that is Jewish life. Definitely in these times, we're all going through some wacky uh, situations, um, not only with the pandemic, but um, the social outcries uh, that are happening, not only um, in this nation, but around the world. How will you incorporate that into the Jewish learning for the higher education? Wow, you hit the nail on the head. It's, um, we're, we're living through some really... Um, unprecedented times. We, we see that word a lot, but really in so many ways. Um, and, and Judaism and Jewish text and Jewish history has so much to bring to bear on our current situation. Um, I've heard from students already who want to talk about anti-Semitism in the world, who want to talk about social justice issues and where, where, does our, uh, where do our Jewish values and our Jewish text Come to inform how we see the world. Um, for me, I, I'm I'm informed by uh, a Jewish teaching that says that there's infinite life, that there's infinite worth to every human life, that every single human being was created in and if you truly, truly, truly 
live that out, um, then we need to see that in, in all of the spheres of existence. We need to see it around our country and around our world. And we need to think about what our individual place is in order to make that happen. Well, I'm very excited about the next year. I'm excited about um, having these teens uh, work with you and learn from you and um, expand their horizons with you. That's going to be great. Um, so Cantor, uh, the lower grades, these little kids are dealing with lack of socialization and Zoom calls and, you know, working with the computer and um, how how are we going to engage these little minds um, and help them formulate their own thoughts about Judaism and, and their little places in the world? Yeah, I, I think about Jewish education as being, for me, it's really important that it's um, rich and engaging. Um, so, so rich in the sense that um, we want these kids to grow up and to go through bar and bat mitzvah and to feel comfortable and confident and positive, as Rob Lumberg said, about being Jewish. We want them to become happy Jewish adults. Um, and so we, we want to make sure that our education it has a richness, a richness to it, that, that everything we do um, is meant to help them feel like Jews and to understand what it's like to be a Jew. Um, I also think about the importance of making sure that what we're doing is in, engaging. And of course, that, that's a huge challenge uh, with Zoom. But um, I think a lot about um, experiential education. So meaning that instead of um, just teaching Hebrew words or holidays or Jewish history, we're giving our students Jewish experiences. Things that they like can- Like what? Great question. Um, so things that they can uh, look back on and and say, oh yeah, I remember that. That was that, that was a thing I did in synagogue, and it was fun, and and it was a, a powerful thing in my life. Things like um, having Shabbat services led or co-led by our even our even our, even our youngest children can um, can be in our services and sing and read for us. Um, also, uh, like having during our religious school, um, you know. Things like uh, creating plays or skits, um, mm -hmm. learning where um, there is an activity happening um, that engages a, stu a student's body and their minds in a way that they're, they're not going to forget. Um, and in terms of Zoom, um, it's, a it's a huge challenge. Any teacher will tell you that um, not being able to be physically present with students, um, it's, it's a huge challenge. Um, so what we're, what we're thinking about is Zoom, as we're doing now, Zoom is really made for people talking to each other, and it's it works well. Um, so what, what we're talking about is what's known as a flipped classroom, um, where our, our kids, when they're not on Zoom with us, uh, will have ways to engage with Judaism uh, that their, their <laughs> teachers will, will give to them. And then when we come together on Zoom, um, they can get to know each other, um, get to know their teachers, and as you said, engage in some socialization with other Jewish kids. And um, on a different note, so to speak, um, you are responsible for the TBA choir, which I am a part of. Um, so any changes or, or new things coming down the road um, this year for the choir or, or junior choir? I aim to feature you guys, the choir and the band as much as possible. Um, I would like you guys to sing solos because you sing beautifully and I want to feature you and, and raise you up. Um, you know, when, when we're doing prayer music, um, I don't want to do all the singing. I want other people to be involved. I, I want, I want to share the, the joy of, of leading prayer for our community. Um, so, so what was really neat um, over the past couple of months, we've had Shabbat Hallelujah where we've had individuals singing um, via Zoom. And this past week, you, and you took your technical know-how and you pulled, them all together, pulled us all together and we were able to sing together in harmony together and it was beautiful. So how was that experience for you? Thank you for bringing that up. So um, everyone in the choir made individual videos 
And then using video editing software, I put it all together into what's called a virtual choir video. And it looks like we're all in the same place at the same time, but because of COVID, we can't be. Um, uh, so it's a virtual choir video. And for me, the process, is, it's a lot of fun. I get, to, I get to sit on my computer and I get to, to watch all of you singing and praying. And, and then I get to um, use my technical brain a little bit and, and create something that um, it's, it's, a, it's a visual of our community. It's our choir. Um, so we're going to keep doing that um, because unfortunately singing together in, in person is, is not really safe right now still. Right. Um, so there'll be more videos of our choir and that's a nice way for us to be together. Great. Great. So Rob, you're coming into a new temple and, you know, temples and congregations, we have our traditions, Jews have traditions and customs, but you'll find that Temple Beth Am might not have the same customs and traditions that you have and that you've uh, grown up with and developed on your own. How will you incorporate your traditions with the Temple Beth Am community traditions and customs? In my own Jewish adult life, I've uh, found things that really work for me, things that um, I really am attached to and appreciate. And this, uh, this synagogue has been established for many, many years and has its own customs and its own ways of doing things. Um, and I feel like we can really mesh those together. And what I've already seen uh, is that, first of all, um, I, I think that many, many traditions and customs that are already enmeshed in the TBA community, um, I definitely jive with. Uh, and I hope that I can also introduce some new ideas, some new ways of thinking um, with Cantor Wolf's amazing repertoire of, uh, of Jewish songs and settings, we can expand our thinking a little bit. We can uh, think about old prayers in new ways, which mm -hmm. is really, really beautiful and wonderful. Um, and, and for me, it, it always sort of goes back to, well, what are our goals? What are we trying to do together as a community? And part of it is certainly a, a, a huge part of it is that we want to feel like we are together as a community that we have those things that bring us together and make us one. Um, mm -hmm. We also want to grow together. And so I see it as part of my job to uh, help this community continue to grow in a way that is mostly comfortable and sometimes pushes the boundaries a little bit. Um, and, and everyone will certainly let me know when I've pushed the boundaries too much. Um, but, but I hope that we really, really grow together as a community. So I think what's interesting about our community is that we have, we have an older community um, and a lot of us grew up with the old prayer book and a couple of years ago we had to flip over to this new prayer book with all these pages and different poems and interpretations. Um, I mean, you're relatively, relatively young. So did you kind of grow up with the Mishkan Tefillah? Great question. I did not, personally. I grew up with the Sidur Sim Shalom, which um, was from the conservative movement. So I grew up in a conservative Jewish synagogue. Um, and I'm trying to think, as you say that, I'm trying to think about all of the different prayer books that I've used in the last, let's say, five years. And I, I have a spot on my shelf with probably seven or 10 different prayer books. Um, and what, first of all, what I love about them is um, that I've seen a lot of different poems and interpretations and readings that uh, maybe I pull from the Reconstructionist prayer book and can bring in um, to our services here in the reform movement and using our Mishkan Tefila Sidur, which I must say, I find to be really mostly user-friendly um, and a really positive experience. But that change is really hard. I mean, I'm, I'm a visual person. And so to suddenly change the visual on you when that's something that you've been used to for so many years, um, it certainly takes time. And, and that's why we're together as a community to help one another and, and to grow together and to say, hey, there are 
there are definitely some positives um, to this, these new experiences and maybe new translations that take out the, you know, we give thanks to thee. <laughs> right. The uh, and I. Right. Some updates. Right. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so we've um, had some pretty good programming um, already um, since this summer, actually, even with Zoom. Um, we've had a couple of social justice movie nights um, highlighting um, the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, we highlighted um, the uh, Jewish the Holocaust Memorial in Boston. Um, we also have currently a TBA Donates um, project going on right now. And we have something coming up called PJ Habdala, which I think is going to be really cute. Um, so everything is listed on our website. Um, can you talk about these programs or any future programs that you'd like to see at the temple? Well, our, our PJ Habdala is, is exciting. It's, Habdala is not a thing that um, we typically have had a lot of pro programming for at PBA. And so we've been talking about... Um, teaching about Havdalah. Um, you know, Havdalah is such a beautiful ritual. It starts us off so on pretty. our week. Yeah, and it, it, um, it's a nice segue from that feeling of, of Shabbat rest and that kind of gentle feeling of, okay, well, I had my rest and now it's time to, to, to jump into my week. Um, so we're hoping that that can be uh, a meaningful ritual. We're also, we've also been talking about including um, Havdalah usually is Saturday night, but our religious school students are there Sunday morning. And so we've discussed um, having a Havdalah ritual on some Sunday mornings as a way to, um, to teach about this really meaningful ritual to our youngest kids. The, the idea of taking a break and then jumping back into your life is, is appropriate for, for even the youngest kids to understand that it's appropriate to, to take a breath um, every now and again. Rob, any thoughts? Sure. I'm really excited about what's coming down the pike. Um, we also are going to be doing, uh, I'll, I'll be teaching a class on preparing our hearts for the high holidays, a three, a three session um, program where we'll be learning some of the texts, some of the rituals, some of the things that really get us ready to feel like we're entering a new Jewish year together. Of course, it's going to be a little bit different this year because we'll be on Zoom. And so to, to do some of that preparation beforehand and to think about what we're hoping to get out of our own personal high holiday experience and to take with us into the new year. I'm really looking forward to doing and I hope that there will be other um, adult education programs in the future. Well, I want to thank both of you for your time. This has been just a lovely chat. Um, I do hope the community has gotten to know you a little bit better and um, I hope this was helpful. If you want to um, say any last moment, um, comments. Um, that would be a good time, Rob. Sure. I'm just so thrilled to be part of the Framingham community. It's such a unique city and a wonderful place. Um, and I'm, I'm just so thrilled to be starting here with this community, of course, starting virtually, but, um, but looking forward to, to being a part and to being here for the community as well and being a, a, a Jewish presence in the larger community. Likewise, I'm so excited to be jumping in with my body and soul to this community and to um, to, to create something and develop something even more um, uh, Jewish and, and supportive and communal and, and, you know, beautiful for all of us. Well, I think that's a wrap for our uh, get to know you session with our new clergy and in Temple Beth Am. If you're interested in um, more information, you can certainly call our temple office at 508-872-8300, um, or you can email me at membership at tempbethom.org. Um, you can also go on our website and get in touch with both Rob Blumberg and Cantor Wolf um, if you have more questions. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.